Even plain milk is a surprisingly really good protein source. Some of these best and worst proteins on this list are going to be kind of surprising. Things that might be really healthy foods, but not exactly the best protein source and vice versa. Protein sources that might be halfway decent, but really shouldn't be consumed all too often. We've all experienced protein washing before. That's where companies add protein to products to spike the protein content, but it's actually not true quality protein. That feels like such a waste of money. It feels like you're not getting quality protein that your body can't actually do something with. Let's talk about the ones that actually work. This best and worst protein list is going to be based upon a DIAAS score, which is how well a protein digests. It's going to be based upon the vitamin content of protein and the mineral content of protein. It's also going to be based upon taste and it's going to be based upon the amino acids that are in it. Is it actually complete? There's going to be some proteins that seem like they really work, but when you actually get into it, they're not the best. Now, one that is really good that you probably know is good, I'm gonna start off with, and that's ground beef. It's high in collagen with the gristle. It's got a very high amino acid score to begin with. It has a DIAAS score of 121. It's naturally very high in creatine, which makes it extremely good when it comes down to building muscle and recovery and anti-inflammatory effects. But if you get down to the nitty gritty of it, it also has a bunch of zinc, which is really good for our immune system. It's also really high in something called conjugated linoleic acid, CLA, which is pretty common in the fat that's in red meat. So you're getting this fat that can actually help your body utilize fat in the mitochondria better. So not just because of its protein content, it's just flat out a good, nutritious, multivitamin, multimineral rich food. But you think ground beef, really good stuff, right? So then there's gotta be other ground meats that are really good too, right? Well, there's some that are not so good. Now, as far as a protein content is concerned, I think ground turkey is quite good. It's got a lot of protein. It's got the right amino acids. But the thing is, when you get into ground turkey, you get into a lot more garbage that is added into that meat. I'm not here to say that ground turkey is going to be like the worst thing that you can eat. But as far as the kinds of protein that are available in a meat source, I would much more likely have you go for ground beef or ground chicken. Now, another one that ranks really well, in my opinion, is good old fashioned whey protein isolate. It catches a lot of flack because, well, it's a processed protein powder, so it doesn't seem good on the surface. But when it comes down to leucine availability, it is one of the highest absorbing proteins and the fastest absorbing in terms of being able to go directly to the source to help you recover and help build muscle. It has a DIAAS score of 125, so it ranks actually higher than ground beef in terms of the kind of protein that your body can assimilate and actually utilize and digest. Remember, this DIAAS score is how easy a protein absorbs and how well our body can assimilate it. Whey protein isolate absorbs 122% faster and better than casein. So casein is the other protein that's in milk. And it's decent, but this just goes to show that whey protein, although processed, is really, really a solid protein source, even if you have to mix it in with something else simply to get it down. But let's get into some more protein powders before we get into these other foods that are kind of interesting and somewhat surprising. Casein protein. Okay, casein protein does not particularly taste good. They usually have to mix it with a lot of things if you're going to get it in a powder form to make it actually taste decent. It doesn't mix well because it's very gelatinous. That's why casein is used as a slow digesting protein. It breaks down slow because it forms this gelatinous like layer. Is it still a good protein source? Well, as far as amino acid profile is concerned, yeah, it's good, but the digestibility score of it is not all that great. Where casein gets interesting is when it's combined with whey and you're ultimately left with a milk protein. So milk protein is actually one of the better proteins that you can have. It's the way I started this video. Believe it or not, when you look at the research, milk protein straight up has some of the highest protein digestibility score that you can get. Some of the highest DIAAS score. And it's simply because you're combining different delivery types in essence, and you're getting these different solutes in a way and different amino acid profiles, making one of the most complete proteins. So with casein protein, you're better off to get your casein directly from something like cottage cheese or maybe from some yogurt. But if you're looking at it from a perspective of the best protein that you can get from a dairy source, it's straight up milk protein. But you're going to want to pay attention 
because you don't want to just go drink a bunch of milk that's going to be loaded with sugar and that's probably going to mess you up too if you drink enough of that right you drink enough milk you're going to have so much sugar and so many calories and so much fat you're not actually getting the protein so actually look for straight up milk protein like literally if you look at some of these companies that are out there that are making protein drinks from milk protein they're not half bad but there is a protein drink a famous protein drink that is not that great in fact, it's one that I would not really have on my list unless I was really in a pinch. And that's the Fairlife Core Power Protein Drinks. The reason that they're not the best is not because they're a bad protein. As a matter of fact, they use milk protein, which is halfway decent, like I mentioned. Like, that's decent stuff. You're getting the combination of the casein, you're getting a combination of the whey, but it's the stuff they add to it. There are loads of artificial sweeteners, there are loads of thickeners and emulsifiers. So you've got carrageenan, you've got other preserves that are in there. It's made with A1 quality milk, which is usually not that good when you're looking at the full spectrum of milk. It's obviously going to be conventional dairy, so it's not organic, it's not A2. So it's like death by a thousand cuts in terms of the additives. But if you were left with just the pure protein, not that bad. As a matter of fact, even the regular Fairlife milk is not all that bad. The filtered milk, you're getting high proteins, lower fat, lower calorie. It's these core power drinks that I will drink from time to time, but it's not something that I would rank as a really high protein. As a matter of fact, I think there's a lot of other options out there, like a regular protein powder, that's probably better. But again, if you're in a pinch and you're at a gas station, I think it's a net positive. It's just, you know, not something you want to lean on every single day, in my opinion. There are other companies out there like Pioneer Pastures. They use like an A2 filtered milk. This is not a plug for them. It's just one that I recommend. They have it at Sprouts. They have it at Target. You can find it out there. Now, these different protein powders are some of the best, but I think the actual best, in my opinion, and one that I try to get my hands on the most, is one that takes in a lot of the things we can talk about and rope them all into one, and that's venison. Venison has some of the highest creatine levels that you can find in a red meat, all while being very low fat. So your calorie to protein ratio is great. You're getting a lot of protein with a lot less calories and a tremendous fatty acid profile. In fact, when you look at the research on wild game, they find the fatty acid profile of wild game is significantly better than the fatty acid profile of conventionally raised meat, right? So you're getting a good quality meat. You're getting all the benefits of red meat. You're getting the CLA. You're getting the zinc. You're getting the multivitamin effect all without the added fat. Another one that can come into play close to venison is actually the opposite on the fat spectrum, and that's a roasted ribeye. A roasted ribeye has a DIAAS score of about 130. Okay, so it's actually more than ground beef in many ways. Could just be the cut, who knows? It could be a number of things, but one thing you have to be careful of with a ribeye is you have a lot of fat to protein. So how you trim that fat makes all the difference in the world. If you look at a ribeye, you could have a ribeye that is 200 calories, but that same weight ribeye could be 300 calories if it has a thicker ribbon of fat. So you're getting the creatine, you're getting the zinc, you're getting the nutrients, you're getting all the stuff that you need and a high quality amino acid that's rich in leucine, but it's coming at a cost of a lot of fat. I also put a link down below for my preferred creatine, which I would recommend that you try if you're looking for a good source of creatine that actually is vetted by third parties. Okay, it's from Create, and that right there is a 54% off discount link. Legit, 54% off, and their gummies are sweetened with allulose. So they have a couple grams of sugar because that helps creatine uptake, but they combine it with allulose, and allulose sort of uses the same transporter that glucose does, and it actually cancels it out to a certain degree. So it's really interesting how they've leveraged the use of allulose in their gummies. Also, just taste unreal. So three of these things, you're getting four and a half grams of creatine. It's easy to eat like 10 of them, so don't do that. But also they have their stick packs if you're looking for just regular good old fashioned creatine with a patented form called CreaPure. So that link is down below. It's in the top line of the description underneath this video. Again, that's for 54% off. The next one irritates me a lot. And it's not that the food itself is bad. The food itself is fine in many ways. But when people say that nut butters are high protein, I guess you could say it's official that they're high gear protein in a lot of foods. But come on, they're not complete. They have one of the lower DIAAS scores. You're not getting actual protein that's usable to a high degree out of that. And your fat to protein ratio is ridiculous. Not to mention most of the nut butters have probably been sitting on the shelves for a long time and have a bunch of oxidized oils in them. So I'm not opposed to nut butters. I'll eat macadamia nut butter. I'll eat sacha inchi butter. I like that stuff. But I'm also very aware that this is a fat source, not a protein source. So it's almost messed up when people tout them as a protein source. Well, one of the best ones out there though, eggs. Flat out 
DIAS score is not tremendously high, surprisingly, at 122, meaning there's foods out there that absorb better, but they round out the cake by being nature's true multivitamin. Vitamins A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K. You also have a high amount of choline, which is a precursor to acetylcholine, so a huge brain benefit. They're rich in monounsaturated fats, even though most people say they're saturated fats. It's a monounsaturated fat over 50%. So you're getting almost olive oil-like effects with high protein, with vitamins, and a brain booster, no doubt this is the one that is going to be my personal favorite overall. If I had it my way, I'd have eggs and venison every single day. But please, please don't make mistakes with the following two, okay? These are ones that I just really want people to be cautious of. And they're not bad foods, once again, but we need to be aware. Bacon. Bacon is not a viable high protein food. It has protein, yes, but once again, we look at this fat to protein ratio and also the DIAAS score. There's also a lot of evidence that pork is usually inhumanely raised and usually doesn't have the best track record in terms of antibiotics and other additives. So is bacon bad? You can absolutely get good bacon, but treat it as a fat source, not as a protein source. The other one I really need you to be careful with is tilapia. Okay, farm-raised tilapia is some of the worst fish that you could ever have. And I'm not saying this just because it's ugly. I'm saying it because it really has a poor fatty acid profile. They're loaded with antibiotics. They're usually a worse amino acid profile than a lot of other fish. And the bottom line is they're just a dirty fish. You can get good quality tilapia, but even good quality tilapia isn't as good as other fish sources. So tilapia is just one of these things where is it really worth it when there's other cheap fish that you could have? Have tuna. That brings me to talk about tuna. Are you worried about the mercury in tuna? Well, there's some recent evidence that suggests that tuna is not as bad when it comes to mercury because it has selenium and selenium helps the liver actually process the mercury better. So we've seen some evidence with that, but I don't recommend eating tuna every single day anyway. And when you do have tuna, go for the chunk light, not the albacore. This is one that I have to fall on the sword with that I used to think was not so good, but now I can't deny the evidence on it. It's whey protein concentrate. Whey protein concentrate is very similar to isolate, except it has not just the isolated whey, it has a little bit of the other milk proteins in it and some of the milk solids. So it's mostly whey, but with those milk solids, you get erroneous proteins that are in there. I used to think this was problematic because I wanted the most pure whey protein possible. Well, get this. Whey protein concentrate has a DIAAS score of 133 versus concentrate at 125. It perfectly shows how when you combine proteins and you actually put them in their whole food matrix form, it actually absorbs better, even though it's totally counterintuitive. It's the exact reason why milk protein is so good. Milk protein combines these things in a whole food form, and this beautiful whole food matrix makes us absorb and utilize it better. One that is really not the best protein source, even though it's halfway decent on paper, is soy protein. If you look at the DIAAS score, it's pretty low at like a 98. What that's showing is that in the grand scheme of protein powders, soy protein powder has isoflavins, it's low amino acid score, it's low leucine, which is the most important protein for muscle building anyway. I mean, if you're plant-based, I could see the benefit there. But I still think there's other proteins that are better even if you're plant-based. Sacha inchi, perhaps some pea protein here and there. But soy is going to get the job done. But again, it's one of those things where it's not going to be the same thing as a good quality egg. Now, one of the big surprises that people are probably going to hear, because they've seen me talk about this one so much, is bone broth. It's surprising. Bone broth as a protein source is not the best, but as a food, it's one of the best. So what I mean is bone broth is tremendous for the gut. It is tremendous for collagen. It is tremendous for connective tissue. It is tremendous because of the gelatin and the gut mucosal layer. But if you're taking it as a complete protein or you're confused and think that it's adding to your protein count, it is not a complete protein. You are not getting what you think you want, but you are getting a benefit. So don't throw it away. Use it, I use it almost every day, but I don't count it towards my protein. Now, I still love Greek yogurt, but what I'm learning is that there's something better. There's something that's called Icelandic skier. Now, this is on my high list. This is something that I really think is powerful. Reason is, is it's a higher protein to fat ratio, and it's concentrated in a way where the protein content is higher. You get a buttery smooth texture with Icelandic skier in a zero fat skier yogurt that tastes like a full 5% fat Greek yogurt. So you're still getting the whey, you're getting the casein, and you're getting the probiotics out of it. 
So you're getting these added benefits that come on top of just the protein itself. So skier is quickly becoming my favorite dairy-based protein, hot dogs. If you're gonna have a hot dog, have a 100% beef or 100% turkey, preferably beef, hot dog. The fatty acid profile in the weird mix mash hot dogs that they put together is not something I would recommend. And two of the proteins that are probably some of the best bang for the buck that you can find, but they both come with caveats, sardines. But when you get the sardines, they have to be in either water or olive oil. Do not get the ones in soybean oil. Do not get the oxidized oils. Preferably get the ones in water so you're just getting pure sardines and the fat from the sardines and get the ones with the bones and the skin so you get the vitamin D and the calcium all in its usable form. Next is the cottage cheese. And this one comes with a major, major, major caveat. Cottage cheese needs to be one that does not have carrageenan. I am not opposed to saying that carrageenan is the most terrible thing in the world, but I do see the research on emulsifiers and it's frightening. And it's frightening in the sense that I don't wanna mess with my gut. I don't know if this is gonna be the worst thing for you in the world, but when there's options for cottage cheese that don't have carrageenan, puts it pretty high on the list in terms of not having additives. The rate of absorption, meaning something you can eat that's gonna digest over a longer period of time, that's probably why cottage cheese makes my list as a top tier food. So I did another video talking about the three different kinds of belly fat. I think this is something really important for people to learn because it's not all just one basic type. So that video is right here and it can teach you a little bit more of how to eat and how to time your protein for the best success. And I'll see you tomorrow.